Hello and welcome to Scrapbooking Station. In this video it's about triptych. So triptych is a style that artists will use to divide up a canvas. So that we appreciate it in a different way. Photographers will use it when they divide up a photo. We're going to be using paper, or I'm going to be using paper. So I've got some demonstrations and tons of samples taking a look at this style. I'm going to put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get started. So in this first project we're going to keep things as simple as we can to create the same look. And so what I've got is a portion of a piece of pattern paper from Hunky Dory. Uh, this comes from Unicorn Utopia Paper Pad. And so this is actually the, the leftover piece from this project that I made using the one that's got the castles and the unicorns and waterfall. So what we're going to do is divide it up. So first thing I did is I cut this down to a number that's divisible by three because I want three long panels. So this is three and three quarters by six and a quarter. So what I want to do is cut it at one and one quarter and then two and a half and that's going to give me my three panels. Before I do that, and in many of these projects what I'm going to do is if I'm going to do something to the image, I'm going to do it before I slice it up, and so I'm just going to add some highlights with perfect pearls. So let me do that, and I'll be back. Once you've divided up your panels, now's the time to figure out, because in this um, method of putting this together, you could put these really close, or you could spread them out, or something like this. So you kind of need to decide on, well first off, if you're going to map them. Now I'm going to map them and so I've cut an eighth inch wider this way, so one and three eighths by six and three eighths because this was six and a quarter by one and a quarter. So I've got my mat. So I just positioned it in the corner here because I could fit this on a four and a half by six and a half inch card base. So I am just going to make it a five by seven so I know it's going to look like this I'm going to have like an eighth of an inch in between oh maybe a little bit more something like that and so I've got about three eighths around a five by seven so I already prepped that cardstock I've got this really pretty satin paper and then I'm going to layer up like so and then lastly, decide if I'm going to put a sentiment, which I already know I am, so I'm just going to put beautiful, that's going to kind of cross over these two panels on the right. So let me get that put together, and then we'll take a look at the finished piece. After assembling all the elements, this is the way the first project turns out, and so, you know, plain pattern piece of paper, divided up in this way, just adds interest. So really pretty and simply done. On the inside, this pattern paper is actually double-sided, so I just took the other side and put that as an insert on my card. Of course, I'm going to do the envelope as well using that same side. So, simply done and adds interest. Now, you can't always just split and then divide. Sometimes you want to split it up by taking out pieces, and you'd want to do that when you've got something realistic and something in the foreground, because if I were just to divide up this boat, this sailboat, it would get somewhat distorted. So what I want to do is take out quarter inch strips of this image. So in order to figure that out, I'm going to have two quarter inch pieces, so I want a half an inch that I want to account for in the full length of my image. Now in this case, I'm going to know what my outer dimensions are going to be, because again, I'm just kind of taking out two strips from my picture. So if I were to make each of these one and three quarters, and then have my half inch, I would need a five and three quarter piece of cardstock. I'd always want to go ahead and cut the width off first, and so I think this is about four and one eighth, so I'm going to make this a four inch panel, then cut off the strips and probably just cut a little bit off of the sky here so that I've got my five and three quarters. So let me split that up and we'll take a look. Once I've reached this point, again, I'm going to compose my card. So decide on the base card, what size it's going to be. And so this one's going to be pretty much same, same. Other than the orientation and, of course, the fact that I took the strips out, I'm going to mat and layer, and I'm going to center it on, it looks to be a six and a quarter by four and a half inch base card. Now I've already matted it, so I've used, uh, this is watercolor paper from Create and Craft, and my mats are basic gray from Stamping Up, and that's only because I wanted to stamp my sentiment, so I've got that on there. 
I'm going to go ahead and layer that up. On the last one, I used foam pads. This is just going to be flat on the card. And I forgot to mention, this comes from Kanban Crafts in the UK. So it is actually a topper. It comes in a topper pad. And actually, while I'm here, I'll open this up because they make uh, sentiment toppers also. So this could be the front of the card, but in this case, it's going to work on the inside. So I'm going to leave photos of that finished project. I'm going to try and compress things a little bit because i still got a lot to get to. We're already about six minutes in. So my next piece is going to be a stamp piece. So in this project, I've just created my pattern paper, so to speak. And so all I did was brush up some, um, this is actually Ranger's Color Burst Powders. So I took a large paintbrush, picked up the grass, and then I used, this is an old step from Stamping Up, it's two-step stamping, and it's called Flower Fancy. So just to put kind of flowers all over the place. And this way, when I split this panel, um, I've got things moving across no matter where I split it. Now this time, instead of doing three equal panels, I'm going to do two panels thinner and then the center panel. And so I'm going to have one and a half, one and a half from each end, and then whatever's left in the middle. And, I don't, well, let's see, it's five and a quarter, so I'm going to take three, so I'm going to have two and a quarter left in the middle. The other thing I've done is I've dice cut some um, ladybugs. And this I actually got off of eBay. So this was like 99 cents off of eBay. It comes from China. I think Paper Wishes carries this particular cutting die as well. And I've got some paper bugs. And so, ladybugs. And I am going to, before I slice this panel up, I'm going to position these. And the only thing different about these ladybugs is that I backed them on um, a sticky, double-sided sticky sheet. And so this way when I attach it, if I were to slice through and leave like an antenna behind to go on to the next panel, it's not going to fall off. So let me get my ladybugs on here and then we're going to take a look at composing the rest of this card. I went ahead and finished this project and so again we've got the divided triptych portion and we have an advantage over artists and photographers in that we can have a larger canvas. So my card front is a bit larger. I think this is seven by four and a half. And so I added this golden ladybug because the sentiment is be yourself. So she's a little bit different. Finished up the inside like so. While I was at it, I did some more stamping. So I've got this piece here that I used. Uh, I believe these come from Joanna Sheen. So I've got two of the same stamp on either end and then a different stamp but the same sort of style as my triptych portion. And to bring across an element, I just added some parchment that I inked in coordinating ink color. So that comes across three pieces. Again, extending the canvas that we have to work with, with my sentiment. Uh, this is my mother's birthday card for next August, actually, so way ahead in a couple embellishments. On the inside, just picked another stamp. And I'll probably go ahead and color that in when I'm done. So now I'm kind of done playing with rectangles. Let's look at some other shapes. So I'm going to move to square next because square is a good one for me to work with as far as a starting image because I typically don't want to send a square card. And so this is a way to kind of break it up and make a rectangular card look pretty seamless. Now what I have here are two sheets from Hunky Dory's new square toppers pads and they are actually four and seven eighths. They call them five by five squares but in these two cases all they've done is taken their standard little book made it a little bit smaller and added borders. So let's go ahead and break up the motorcycle in the triptych style. So again I've got two narrow panels with the center panel being larger a matte and layer and on the inside just a cutout. And on the second one, kind of like I did with number 82, I took the borders that I cut off of the image and used them to come across the three panels. Now in this case I split a narrow, then a little bit larger, and then the remainder of the image across. Now inside I've just got some racing stripes. So let's look at, for my next couple projects, let's take a true square topper. This is a topper sheet that comes from the paper boutique and they typically do circles and squares. 
Now, I didn't bring up, you know, chopping or cutting across like faces or chopping off someone's neck or in this case we're looking at sentiments. So I could take this sentiment and cut it this way. I'm going to go ahead and do a narrow and then a middle size and then a larger one and snip this one in two. So I'm going to separate that out. Let's look at the other elements and then while I'm at it I've got a true square topper from Hunky Dory, so I'm going to use this one here and divide it up. I'm probably going to need to get rid of these borders, and we're going to talk about that once I come back. And this is a finished first square topper, and so all I've done on the base card, and again, extending the canvas, but this time using a rectangular frame. So I've got this frame die that, again, I bought off of eBay, so it comes from China. Just something with leaves and swirls, kind of emulating some of the imagery in the uh, focal. On the back, I don't know if you're noticing, maybe when you go back and take a look, a lot of the patterns that I'm putting behind the focal have a strong pattern. So in this case, I've got horizontal stripes kind of moving the eye across as well. Just added a big bow, and on the inside, I went ahead and kind of split in three. Actually, it's two pieces, and then using the pattern to look like it, I've got three in a triptych style interior, and then another die cut. And these pattern papers uh, come from Paper Boutique also, so they're coordinating papers for this topper set. Now, on the Hunky Dory piece, I was going to talk about these borders, or the frame that is actually on the square, and I was going to suggest that you need to cut these off and have the um, side borders come across the image three ways. But you know what? I'm going to take back. You can cut it however it looks good to you. So I've matted it on gold and then added a vine cutting die. And this one comes from Tattered Lace. So I've got this vine that kind of comes, you can't see it really, kind of kind, if I turn it this way. And then I've got what I call a crossover piece here. We're going to talk more about that later. So added my sentiment on the bottom to uh, kind of stretch out my canvas as well. On the inside, just a smile sentiment cutting die. So nothing really earth shattering there using squares, rectangles, kind of same, same. So I want to look at a circle piece next. So I've got a watercolor stamped image, and these stamps come from Polka Doodles. So I stamped it in watercolor, actually it's the archival black, so, and then used colored pencils and water to kind of do my coloring. And so what I need to do now is I need to split it, and so let's see how this turns out. I've got this light board now, so I used to use um, rulers and whatnot, and if you still want to do that, the idea is that I want to divide this but I do want to make sure that I am straight across on both my cuts. And so I know my center is going to be this point here and this point and then there and there. And so I want to come three quarters off of center and I'm going to mark both these ends. And so when I slice it, I'm going to get a clean slice this way and I'm going to move it three quarters this way, tick off those as well and slice up my image. Now let me go ahead and turn that off because I know it's tough to see because I want to talk about matting this circle because I'm just going to divide, spread them after I cut and so what you're going to need are two mats so you cut yourself two mats, this is just one eighth larger all the way around or so a quarter inch larger circle cutting die and so what you're going to want to do is go ahead and take the two pieces and you know make an even edge on one side, even edge on the other, you don't have to worry that these are uh, parallel to one another because what you're going to do now is come and slice about one eighth or as close as you can get on this panel and this panel. Now the other circle, of course, doesn't need to be a full circle. This is what I had left out of actually the piece of cardstock I was working with. So I was working with something like this. But this could be the first full circle as well. And again, you just kind of mat your image, just making sure that the circle edges are even. So let me do that. And what I've been showing you in some of these photos is how I'm kind of trying to piece together the uh, canvas for the focal. So in this case, I've got pattern papers also, which came from Polka Doodles. Again, the same people making the stamps, and that's why I colored them in the colors that I did. And I usually matte and layer this piece 
If I'm going to use a border, I'm going to mat and layer it, but I'm not going to stick it together until I decide whether I want wrapping ribbons or some other embellishment moving in and out of the card. Anyway, that's just in the slides. So let me put this together and then I'll be back. So the first thing you're going to notice is I threw in a double mat onto the centerpiece because something unexpected happened. I didn't think it all the way through, but when I divided my circle, if you follow the uh, mossy metal color cardstock, you see where I've got this gigantic um, change in level on the top and bottom, and that's what happens when you spread a circle. So very possibly not one of my favorite pieces. Also, this butterfly over here, or moth, whatever that image is, um, I don't know. By the time it got split that far, I'm thinking it's a little bit too split up. If I were to do this one over again, I'd probably start with an oval, stamp the full image, and do take out take out like quarter inch strips and do it that way. And I think it would be a little more cohesive. Anyway, on the inside, just uh, stamped with some other stamps from that stamp set. So I want to toss in two extra projects because that didn't work. So I'm going to use a hexagon. I'm going to put it on point. Kind of the same way that I split up the circle. I've measured the points here and I know this is two and a half inches wide so I want to come not two and a half, one and a half. So something shorter than that. So once I cut out this center piece, I'm going to move this way and cut out what's left over here. So I'm just going to have some sort of outside piece and then over here. And I'm going to do another piece at the same time. So I'm going to start with diamonds, and I'm going to have a larger diamond as the center part of my triptych, and then two of these smaller diamonds. So let me cut that out. I'll leave photos of the materials, and then come back with those two finished projects. In this finished hexagon, I pretty much layered uh, the pattern right back to where it was. So the mats kind of over go over this edge a little bit. And so we got this great little bold pattern. I don't know that this shows off the style to the best of advantage using pattern paper. And just the other thing, just a note kind of got lost on the pattern. And this is true anytime you either want to stamp or use die cuts on top of a pattern. If it's getting lost, just a piece of vellum. So I cut another hexagon inside there and just put a couple shapes on the inside. This one, the pattern wasn't as bold or as cohesive, I guess, would be the word, across. And so it's a bit busy. And so when I add a busy ribbon, and that's actually both of them, and then the inside more diamonds. I want to talk about these materials a little bit. So I've got the uh, of course, nested hexagons and diamonds. These come from Tattered Lace. So many hexagons and many diamonds. And then this is also another Tattered Lace die, kind of the inside. And just a note comes from Paper Wishes. Um, the papers are all from Attic Boutique. And that's an older collection from Stamping Up. So lots of patterns I could have choose from, chosen from. And then Soft Suede was my solid in that case. Now, I wasn't totally excited about this card, so I did one more piece using my shapes and um, went back to the hexagon so I took this image out of a hunky dory little book and went across uh, long ways so I've got this nice one I think you know kind of sets it off a little bit better for this style and this is a cutaway card and so on the outside I've just got this piece here and the reason I like cutaways is because this can have dimension without puffing up the inside of my card and again hexagon and a couple tags so that finishes this segment. Now what I want to do is I kind of alluded to earlier. Well, let me leave photos of this and I'll be back. Okay, I want to start off with this because back when I was showing you this piece, I said I've got a crossover element here. Now in this case, it's a die cut independent of my image. So what we're going to do now is triptych with a crossover, but the crossover is going to be part of the image. So I've got a couple projects that I'm going to be putting together, and in all cases, I'm going to take the base image 
and remove a piece. So we're not going to split and spread. It's going to be uh, divide and leave a gap. And so what I've got here is a digital image. It actually comes from Hunky Dory as well. It's called Hunky Dory Home DVD. Uh, what is it? A USB. And I printed out, of course, the full panel first. And then I printed out the portions so that I could cut this and lay it across. So I'm going to cross over all three portions of my triptych. I'm going to raise it up on foam squares. And then I've got an additional one. So it's a decoupage look. If you have a decoupage panel, you could divide it up, remove those elements, and then layer your decoupage on top. So we're going to see how that looks. On the second project I'm working on, I've got a sheet that comes from a topper that's got this forest going on, this kind of almost silhouette forest. And so in this case, let me move this out of the way. I'm going to talk about this. So first off, I made it the width that I wanted to. And as I was cutting, this is another one. I'm removing elements of this image. So as I, I came across, I did that. And how I did that is I drew some lines. And if you look at the materials photo, which I'm going to leave you with, you can see these two pencil lines. And so I cut around the shadow, but I knew where this needed to be. I also added some of these darker die cuts, so that's where you're seeing these black trees in here. Now as I layer this onto the panel, I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to raise this one up on narrow foam squares, so it's going to come something like this, matching exactly where this came out of this other image. And then lastly, this piece is going to go on higher still. Then we'll come back and see how that looks. And since this is kind of a photographer's and painter's sort of style of displaying their art, I took a photograph, so I'm going to do a scrapbook page. Again, a large photograph. I removed quarter inch elements. I'm going to mat each of these and I printed out this, this portion of this photograph. And so it is going to cross over. Let me see how it goes. Like so. So it's going to cross over my borders and we'll see how that turns out as well. So we're almost there. I'll be back with the finished projects. I think if you went back and looked at all the projects, what you're going to notice is there are very few embellishments other than the triptych, focal. So unless you increase the canvas, now in this case, you know, the card is my canvas. So instead of matting, these are laid flat onto the card. And this is also a good one if your image has people or animals where you don't want to cut off heads or arms or legs. And so you can divide your panel up anyway. That looks good for you. And then the elements that you raise can be the full person. So that works well. On the inside, uh, I just printed a piece of the pattern paper that went with this topper set and added a die cut. So really simply done. This one, I didn't have to really add much again. So I've got my layers. Actually, it looks really good, almost like a shadow. I'm glad I did add these extra little die cuts here. And then you are my, and then I've got friend again. So the remaining piece of that uh, paper, which was 5x5, five five, I just put on the inside. And that worked out really well. And here's my finished scrapbook page. So again, just raising this single bloom up over my triptych element. And so it didn't add much of anything, just a border title and a couple of embellishments. And that's only to uh, match it up with my companion, which is going to be over there. And I'll leave photos of the two-page spread as well. I did want to add one more thing. I'm sorry for running so long, but this is kind of interesting because this is a digital graphic again. This comes from Magic Graphics. And I actually printed it in three panels. And so as I quick, quickly realized when I started fussy cutting, well, this is silly. I could have started with a square and just made two slices across, rounded some corners. So after fussy cutting, all this other stuff developed. Anyway, plenty of projects, and I think you'll find addicting, and you're going to realize as you get started that there are different images and toppers that will work with this style. And also, don't forget your scrapbook pages. Anyway, I hope you took something you something with you that you can use in your own paper crafts and I thank you for watching.